Dear students, welcome to online class arranged by National University. I'm happy to be the part of this journey because I think that these classes will benefit the students a lot. And when students will attend the classes, they will get information about the topics that are set for their exam. Let us move on to our class. As you see on the screen that our today's topic of discussion is Pop Studies by Francis Beck. This text is in your introduction to prose and course code is 211107 for the students of B Honors Part 1. I am Muhammad Ishtay Hassan, Assistant Professor, Department of English at Dhaka City College. Today I'll be discussing on some of the important parts of Pop Studies by Francis Bacon. So we'll, what we'll cover in our today's lecture is given here. Definition of essay, Bacon's life, Bacon as an essayist, analysis of the essay, practical advice and studies, text and discussion, salient features, prose style, and finally, the questions. So we move on to our lecture with that definition of essay. Before the starting of this uh, discussion, would like to give the audience some of the important information. The name of a text is Of Studies, it's an essay. It was first published in 1597 and later revised in 1612. And the author of this essay is Francis Bacon, 1561 to 1626. So we can see the definition of essay what is essay? Essay, literary composition devoted to the presentation of the writer's own ideas on a topic and generally addressing a particular aspect of the subject. Often brief in scope and informal in style, the essay differs from such formal expository forms as thesis, dissertation, and treatise. We also find that uh, an essay has been defined in a variety of ways. One definition as a prose composition with a focused subject of discussion or long systematic discourse. It is difficult to define the genre into which essays fall. Aldous Huxley, a leading essayist, gives a guidance on the subject. He notes that the essay is a literary device for saying almost everything about almost anything and adds that by tradition, almost by definition, the essay is a short piece. Furthermore, Huxley argues that essays belong to a literary species whose extreme variability can be studied most effectively with a threefold frame of reference. These three poles are the personal and the autobiographical. The essayists feel most comfortable in this pole, write fragments of reflective autobiography and look at the world through the keyhole of anecdotes and description. Second one is the objective, the factual and the concrete. The essayists right from this poll do not speak directly of themselves, but turn their attention to outward to some literary or scientific or political theme. Their art consists on setting forth, passing judgment upon and drawing general conclusions from the relevant data. And the last one is the abstract universal. In this poll, we find those essayists who do not, who do their work in the world of high abstractions, who are never personal and who seldom mention the particular facts or experience. We find that the word essay derives from the French infinitive essay to try or to attempt. An English essay first meant a trial or an attempt. And this is still an alternative meaning. The Frenchman Michael de Montaigne, 1533 to 1592, was the first author to describe his work as essays. He used, to, he used the term to characterize these as attempts to put his thoughts into writing and his essays grew out of his commonplace scene. 
inspired in particular by the works of Plutarch, a translation of morals into French, just been published by Jacques Amiot, Montaigne began to compose his essays in 1572. The first edition entitled Essays was published in two volumes in 1580. For the rest of his life, he continued revising previously published essays and composing new ones. Francis Bacon's essays published in book form in 1597, 1612, 1625 are the first works in English that describe themselves as essays. Ben Johnson first used the word essays in English in 1609, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. So, we can also see origin of the essay. The development of the form may be considered the result of the Renaissance emphasis on the individual who is fostered exploration of one's inner self in relation to the outside world. As I have discussed earlier that uh, Montaigne's essays, as he called the brief personal meditation in prose that he began to publish in 1580, were created in a time of great intellectual and social reorientation. A time when Europeans are readjusting their visions and values with respect to a vast number of matters, including death, the possibility of an afterlife, travel and exploration, social relationship, all of these remain major themes of the essay. So we can also say about the essay that an essay is object objective in its dealing with the subject matter. Frenchman Montaigne wrote the essays in the 16th century. Montaigne's essays were subjective. Bacon borrowed this form, but made it distinctively his own with his self-assertion and talked about ideas based on his observation of the world. Bacon can be compared with essays Charles Lamb and Montaigne as regards his informal style of conversation in his essays. So we can see that Bacon has taken the essay in his own form and has made some changes in his essays. Let us know about Francis Bacon, the writer of essays. Francis Bacon, 1561 to 1626, uh, he is a man of uh, multiple talents, English philosopher and statesman, one of the pioneers of modern scientific thought. He was born on January 22, 1561 at York House in the Strat, London, and educated at Trinity College, University of Cambridge. Elected to the House of Commons in 1584, he served until 1614. Some of the milestones of uh, Francis Bacon's life received the Queen's Council designation, which was conferred in 1597, became the legal advisor of Elizabeth I of England after the accession of James VI and first in 1603 Bacon was knighted died in 1626 at the age of 65. So his life is full of different stories. In the last session of the first parliament held February 1611, under James I, the differences between Crown and Commons grew critical and Bacon took the role of mediator despite his distrust of James' chief minister. In 1616, Bacon became a Privy Councillor and in 1618, he was appointed Lord Chancellor and raised to the peerage as Baron Verulam. In 1620, his Novum Organum was published and on January 26, 1621, he was created Viscount St. Albans. In the same year, he was charged by Parliament with exception, accepting bribes, he confessed but said that he was heartily and penitently sorry. He submitted himself to the will of his fellow peers who ordered him fined, imprisoned during the king's pleasure and banished from parliament and the court. After his release, he retired to his family residence at Warhambury in 6 September 1621. The king pardoned him but prohibited his return to parliament or to the court. Bacon then resumed his writing, completing his history of Henry VII, 
and his Latin translation of Advancement of Learning. In March 1622, he offered to make a digest of the laws with no further consequence despite repeated petitions to James I and James' successor, Charles I. Bacon's writings fall into three categories, philosophical, purely literary, and functional. The best of his philosophical works are the Advancement of Learning in 1605, a review in English of the state of knowledge in his own time and novum organum, or the indications respecting the interpretation of nature. We can see from his life that uh, he is, he has worked uh, in his essay in a different way. And uh, we can say that he's called the father of, of empiricism, the theory that all knowledge is based on experience derived from the senses. Stimulated by the rise of experimental science, it developed in the 17th and 18th centuries, expounded in particular by John Locke, George Berkeley, and David Hume. He was most interested in scientific knowledge based only upon inductive reasoning and careful observation of events in nature. And if you see about his life, and if you just look about the ways of his writing, we'll also find that uh, his philosophy emphasizes the belief that people are the servants and interpreters of nature, and truth is not derived from authority, and that knowledge is the fruit of experience. Bacon is generally credited with having contributed to logic, the method known as ampliative inference, a technique of inductive reasoning. Previous logicians uh, had practiced induction by simple enumeration, that is drawing general conclusion from particular data. Bacon's method was to infer by use of analogy from the characteristics or properties of the large group to which that data belonged, leaving to later experience the correction of evident errors. English philosopher and statesman Sir Francis Bacon rose through the ranks of the Elizabethan bureaucracy to achieve the position of Lord Chancellor during the reign of King, King James I. Bacon wrote important literary and philosophical works and was a major contributor to modern scientific thought. His essays, published at different times in 1597 and 1625, incorporate elements of all three disciplines and are considered his chief contribution to literature. We will move on to our next slide. So if we just analyze his essay, we find the following things. The essays of Bacon are full of worldly wisdom, practical thinking, and pragmatic advice, and therefore they constitute a handbook of practical wisdom. Worldly wisdom connotes to the kind of wisdom that is required for achieving worldly success. His essays are called counsels, civil and moral by Bacon himself. In his essay, Bacon has emphasized the utilitarian importance of his studies. He presses home the idea that knowledge derived from books should be complemented by practical experience. So he's talking about the practical experience of life. Only the bookish knowledge won't give us the knowledge we need. He argues that about the importance of studies in real life situations, which will be discussed in this today's discussion. With his authoritative style, almost preaches to allusions or, or instances. So when he talks about the essays, he also brings about some of these allusions or instances to make it easier for the readers. And we move on to our main discussion of, of his studies. He has uh, presented this. Bacon divides studies into three useful types. They provide delight, ornamentation, and ability. And uh, when we'll talk about uh, his essays, we'll find some striking words from his essay and which is uh, uh, very much important. 
Uh, the ESA of studies by Bacon is the first essay in the series of 10 essays published in 1597. Later it was revised in 1612 with the addition of some more sentences and ideas. The essay is regarded as Bacon's masterpiece enriched with stylist Latin vocabulary, fresh and new ideas, logical and relevant themes and wisdom of the world. For that reasons, the essay is still popular among individuals of all ages. Adopting a didactic approach, the essay informs the readers about the benefits and uses of studies in one's life. So the author has talked about the benefits of studies in his essay. And he has also brought some of the Latin words in his essay. And uh, his essays are full of uh, wisdom. And we can see that it has some of these uh, practical value. Of studies can be described in this way. We can say studying is helpful for better understanding and provides a knowledge that develops experience as well as a character that grows. Reading provides delight and fun, ornament and showing off, and the ability for success. Bacon expanded upon different fields of study depending on one's goal, for example, to master clarity with the language, study, and poetry. So he starts his essay with this line, studies serve for delight, for ornament, and for ability. Their chief use for delight is in privateness and retiring, for ornament is in discourse and for ability is in the judgment and disposition of business. So he has uh, talked about three important aspects of study. And uh, it is found in his essays that uh, when he talks, he makes some big lines and he also, there are some parts in his uh, writing. Beginning with a tripartite explanation of why studies are useful, Bacon opens by addressing the various reasons one may avail himself to studies. Bacon uses the term studies to refer to wisdom and authority conferred to books to the reader. A close reading of the first line presents the verb serve. That is, studies are in the service of these options. Studies have an instrumental value in helping those who read for enjoyment, those who wish to improve the quality of the manner of speaking, and those who wish to improve their value they bring to the marketplace. Reading for pleasure allows one to develop an appreciation for great writing. Reading for ornament allows one to think and speak with greater clarity. Reading for business allows one to rise to the top of his or her expected industry. An expressive vocabulary allows one to express ideas with greater subtlety and the person who speaks in that way becomes smarter. Intelligence along with consciousness will allow one to rise to the tops of hierarchy. One will stay at the peak. Studies prove immensely valuable in such endeavors. So we find the important aspects of studies. And in the first place, we talked about the studies serve for delight. And it's in the second part we see his studies for ornamentation. A learned person can embellish his ideas and words. He can present himself convincingly in public life. His societal position and influence is heightened. By studying, a person can be adept in conversation and in dealing with people with his power of articulation. So the person who reads a lot is able to do better than other people who do not read because the reading gives us the ideas of presenting new ideas. So we see that uh, taken from the line, 
and it is found that he uses pithy sentences, similes, and Latin phrases to strengthen his standpoint. Studies also can help one in judgment and disposition of business. In coach or in business, studies can strengthen a person intellectually in handling people and business matters. So studies are prerequisite to worldly success. A learned person can lead or marshal a lot of people with this knowledge. So uh, there are different uh, benefits of studies and uh, Bacon has talked all, uh, all in his essay. Uh, importance of experience along with studies. So Bacon has clearly presented his idea of study and he has also talked about the experience that is a practical experience. A study has a uh, practical ex experience. Bacon says that studies can be only too pedantic and textbook knowledge will not be as effective if they are not powered by experience. So the experience has a great value. So only the reading, only study, will not make one more uh, knowledgeable, rather the experience will help him in his study. The natural abilities are like natural plants that need pruning by study, and studies themselves do give for directions too much. At large, except they be bounded in, in experience. So every time he has not only talked about his study, but also he has also talked about the experience. We see the practical advice on studies. Utility of studies, various modes of studies and their benefits, uses and abuses of studies, studies and experience, attitude to studies, approach to studies, studies and the cure of the mind. So all these things have been expressed in his essay of studies. And we, we also see that how he has presented everything in his essay. So if you just uh, quote from the lines of the text, we find crafty men contempt studies, simple men admire them, and wise men use them for they teach not their own use, but that is a wisdom without them, and above them one by observation. Read not to contradict and confute, not to believe and take for granted, not to find talk and discourse but to wave and consider. So his uh, words tell us a lot of things. We can also get other ideas from these lines. So he has talked that some books are to be tested, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. That is some books are to be read only in parts, others to be read, but not curiously, and some few to be read fully and with diligence and attention. Some books also may be read by deputy and extracts made of them by others, but that would be only in the less important arguments and the meaner sort of books, else distilled books are like common distilled waters, flashy things. So Francis Bacon addresses various aspects in his study. The tripatriot elements in this essay allow for both efficiency and complexity, allowing Bacon the liberty to expatiate when necessary, but not as to stray from the purpose of the essay. By crafty man, Bacon means practical men with a disposition towards formal studies. Such men tend to lack the necessary foresight to realize the value of studies. And on the other hand, simple men merely admire studies and those whom they perceive to be intelligent. The value of studies is in their utility. That must be the first. In the later portion of this section of the essay, Bacon gives advice on how to read, given the seemingly infinite number of printed materials in the world today, one must focus on quality. With regard to education, quality can be determined for a select number of works published from ancient times to about a century before the present. Great classics have stood up to generations of the best cities, critics. They have made a significant impact in our lives. 
Life is too short to be reading the ideological garbage produced by the likes of Judith Butler. Focus on the great works of Francis Bacon, Leonardo da Vinci, John Wolfgang von Goethe, and Father Dostoevsky. And we see that uh, how he has presented all these ideas in his essays. And when he talks, he also gives some logic in his essay so that it becomes clear to the audience. So we have also discussed this earlier that studies serve for delight, for ornament and probability. And we have also seen what expert pen can execute and perhaps just a particular one by one, but the general counsels and the plots and marshalling of affairs come best from those that are learned. So he is also always talking about the learned people. So the learning will come through study. To spend too much time in study the slots, to use them too much for ornament is affectation. To make judgment fully by the rules is the humor of the scholar. So in every line, we also see his logical description of his study. And it is found that uh, he also talks about the benefits of his studies. And at the same time, he also talks about some of the abuses of his studies. It is said that uh, the person who read too much time is slow. And the person who uses it most of the time for ornament is affected. Affectation means pretension. To make judgment holy by the rules of the humor of a scholar. So we need not to see everything from the rules of studies. Rather, we need to use our own experience. And uh, we see from the lines from the text, the perfect nature and are perfected by experience. For natural abilities are like natural plants that need pruning by study. Studies themselves do give four directions too much at large, except they be bounded by the experience. And we have also discussed all these things earlier. And it is seen that read not to contradict and conclude, not to believe and take for granted, not to find talk and discourse, but web and possible. So whenever he talks about study, he also talks about the idea that we need to make some observation in our reading and how we should read. And uh, we see that uh, what is uh, going in his essay. So you find that uh, some books are to be tested, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested, that is some books are to be read. Okay, uh, Francis Bacon has talked about the importance of books, different sort of books, and he has also uh, talked about how books should be read for better understanding. And he has also talked that some books may be read by deputy and extracts made of them by others, but that would be only in the less important arguments. And the meaner sort of books, else distilled books are like common distilled waters, flashy things. So books are compared with uh, distilled waters, flashy things, because in distilled water, it is pure and everything is same. And uh, he has always talked about the importance of reading and he has also presented the various aspects of reading uh, through his office studies. And we see that what does reading make? Reading maketh a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. And therefore, if a man write little, he had need to have a great memory. If he control little, he had need to have a present weight. And if he read little, he had need to have much cunning to seem to know that he does not. So he has presented his ideas in this way. And if we see that uh, his words are full of worldly wisdom. And we find that Highlighting the importance of studies, Bacon essay illustrates the role studies play in an individual's life. For Bacon, the study is always related to the application of knowledge in practical life. 
So we see at the beginning, Bacon describes the three main purposes of study where both are seen. And uh, we've also found the various aspects of study. And uh, the author is the notion that only learned and well-read men can execute plans effectively, manage their daily affairs with expertise, and lead a healthy and stable life. He further says that reading makes a full man, conference leads to a ready man, while writing makes an exact man. While throwing light to the advantages and usefulness of studies, Bacon also puts forward some demerits of his study, as he thinks that studying for a prolonged period of time may lead to laziness. So he has talked about the importance of the study, and at the same time, he has also talked about the bad side uh, that is uh, used for a prolonged time, for a long time for his study. And he has also talked that uh, the act of studying from books solely without learning from nature around. The essay further assess the benefits of his studies by considering this act as a medicine for the defects of the human mind and the source of enhancing one's wit. Uh, while discussing the importance of studying in an individual's life, the essayist informs readers about the benefits of reading good books. So according to him, some books are only meant to be tested, others are there to swallow, while some books are meant for chewing and digesting properly. Therefore, the readers must choose wisely before studying any book to enhance their knowledge about the world. Bacon concludes his essay by suggesting that studies assist an individual in removing the defects of the mind as every problem of the human mind carries special importance for the individual and the world. So we see that according to Bacon, histories make men wise, poetry, witty, the mathematics subtle, natural philosophy deep, moral grave, logic and rhetoric able to contain I went to study here in Morse. So from this text, we can find that uh, bowling is good for the stone and reins, shooting for the lungs and breast, gentle walking for the stomach, riding for the head and the like. So if a man would be wondering, let him study the mathematics for in demonstration. If this would be called away, never so little, he must begin again. So. Uh, Francis Bacon has talked about the different benefits of his studies and at the same time he has also talked about how his study can help the people in these problems. So he is talking again that uh, what uh, uh, the person needs uh, for his study and how his study will help the individual in mitigating his problem. So we move on to our important aspects of uh, Bacon's thesis, that is a moral, morality of Bacon, utilitarian, that is Machiavellian, his target readers, pragmatic, worldly wise, and authoritative. So if we see that uh, how he has presented his uh, essays are also full of important observations about life. And uh, it is found that in his essay, he has presented everything. And one of the important aspects of his uh, style of prose can be understood in a way that uh, his prose, really, his essay are distinctive and become a classic, not for their subject matter, but for their unique style. Use of short and sharp statements, use of logical sequence, contraction and expansion of ideas, images from day to day life, use of Latin and Greek expressions. So in his writing, he has presented his uh, uh, Latin and Greek expressions are presented in his essay. 
And if you see the style of Bacon's writing, we find the aristic beginning, aphoristic style, analytical presentation, use of figures of his piece, and Latin quotations. Of his studies opens with the three aspects of study, and uh, it is presented with utmost clarity. But the most uh, celebrated aspect of Bacon's prose style is the aphoristic. His sentences are brief in character and universal in content. There is a force in the sentence and the reveal insights and truth of studies also contains Bacon's aphoristic style and they are like proverbs. For example, we can say reading maketh a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. So if you see this, that uh, we can also understand his style, aphoristic styles we have uh, discussed so far. Speaking from a higher pedestal, abrupt opening, silogistic systematic development, scholarly allusions, Latin quotations, tripartite or three pronged lines. So he presents some big lines, longer lines in his essays. So we can easily understand his uh, prose style. And as we have discussed earlier, that uh, his writing is scholarly, we find allusions, Latin quotations, and tripartite or three pronged lines. So his lines are longer. And if we find that uh, he has talked highly of uh, studies. So he has a great style of writing. First, he gives the idea in condensed form. Then he expands. And uh, if we just see the first line, studies are for delight, for ornament, and for ability. Then he expands their chief use of for delight is in privateness and retiring. For ornaments is in discourse and for ability is in the adjustment and disposition of business. Bacon's prose is enriched with brilliant figures of his face drawn from familiar objects of nature or from the fact of everyday life. Offices are apt, vivid, and suggestive. Natural abilities are like natural plants that need pruning by study. Distilled books are like common distilled waters flash with things. Bacon was a learned man. His scholarship is seen in his use of Latin quotations. In the office studies, he uses two Latin quotations. One is taken from Ovid, Abend, Studia, and Morris, and the other is Simini Sectors, referring to the scholars of Middle Ages. Bacon's prose style is not personal and subjective, rather objective and didactic. It is terse, epigrammatic, rhetorical, and full of learned quotations. In the shortest possible words, he explores maximum ideas, so he is still attracting our attention. So it is also found that uh, sometimes it is called that dispersed meditations. Uh, in this case, uh, it is it can be said that his writings are not always the dispersed meditation, because uh, sometimes we find that this is written uh, from his own mind with some ideas taken from his life. Bacon finds room for conjunctions and connective clauses. Ideas are not left underdeveloped and transitions from one to another are not so abrupt. So in some of the cases, all his essays are not discussed meditations. And he is also a rhetorician because uh, he is, has a great rhetorical power in his essays. We are coming to the end of our today's discussion. Now we move on to our important parts. Questions, discuss Bacon's utilitarian Machiavellian philosophy with reference to op studies or show how Bacon as a man of practical wisdom with reference to op studies 
a write on Bacon as a moralist with reference to rock stars. Write an essay on the prose style of Bacon or consider Bacon as an essayist. So we move on to the concluding part. And uh, we find that uh, how important his essays are. And uh, his essays also tell us some of the important parts of our life. The essays, he, sometimes it is said that devoid of any emotions and colorful expressions, it is a wonderful effort of teaching the readers about the importance of study. So his words are full of straightforward and which gives the readers some of the ideas about how we should read and the different aspects of reading. And we also go for the short questions, bring out the aphoristic qualities in of studies. What is pragmatism, right, with reference to of studies. Uh, with this, we have come to the end of our today's discussion. Thank you for attending the session. We'll be meeting with a new topic in our next class. Till then, goodbye.